Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He was a goalie. But my daughter wants to be goalie, and I'm like going to have a heart attack. <laughs> no, she before, loves before, before you're a goalie, you gotta learn to play the field. That, that's that, that, that's what Craig Cipher always says. Yeah. Oh yeah. What was the final your game Saturday? Did you win it or lose it? It looked like you. No, it's seven. We should get started. Yeah. I don't know. Are we, Who's missing? Are we connected? Are we connected? Nancy, are we good? Yeah, we're going to start. You're not. We're going to do some things first. So, you guys, if everyone should, you just grab a seat. We'll just keep waving to you guys. Because we love you guys. Sal, Sal. Mayor has the ability to move the agenda around, so we'll wait. <laughs> yeah. Your, your son's yeah, we're just going to start the general yeah, meeting. We'll do it here. We're not wearing masks. We need Rob, too. They're in the room, so we they're should. In the room. Well, I think we should because we have the public in here. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're, they're any second. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But, okay. I mean, we have people in the room, so I don't need to okay. have... I was just asking a question. I think it's up to you. What's the question? Masks. I'm just oh. hugging and kissing them all. Just for perception. Yeah. I guess. You should have one more meeting. Yeah. Okay. The rule is going to change in the next day or two. We only have one doctor in the room, and he doesn't wear one. <laughs> <laughs> the 7 p.m. work session meeting is now called to order. Can I get a roll call of the township committee, please? Mr. Grinstrup? Here. Mr. Madigan? Uh, here. Mr. Melchior? Here. Mr. Shanley? Here. Mayor Rubenstein? Here. And Nancy, can I get a reading of the open work session statement, please? Yes, Madam Mayor. Please take notice that in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10, colon 436 at SEC, and in consideration of Executive Order Number 103, issued by Governor Murphy on March 9, 2020, declaring a state of emergency in the state of New Jersey, the Township Committee of the Township of Wyckoff does hereby notify the public that to protect the health, safety, and welfare of our citizens while ensuring the continued functioning of government, this meeting of the Township Committee of the Township of Wyckoff scheduled for 7 p.m. Tuesday, May 18, 2021 at Wyckoff Town Hall, 340 Franklin Avenue, Wyckoff, New Jersey, 07481 will be live streamed via the Township of Wyckoff's YouTube channel. And members of the public may call 201-891-7000, extension 222, should they wish to provide public comment during the public comment period. Members of the public may also email their public comments to Wyckoff Clerk at wyckoff mjcom before 3 p.m. on the day of the meeting. These comments will be read at the meeting during the public comment period. These measures are implemented to allow members of the public to observe the meeting via live streaming and to provide to the public the ability to comment before the meeting through written comments as well as during the period for public comment which appears on the agenda for the meeting. This notice and agenda have been posted on the front door of Town Hall facing Franklin Avenue and on the township's homepage, wyckoff-mj.com, at the quick link for minutes and agendas on Friday, May 14, 2021. Please select township committee and locate the date of the meeting to view documents, such as resolutions and ordinances, which would otherwise be made available. General instructions regarding access to the meeting will be posted on the Wyckoff website's homepage at wyckoff-mj.com as a news item on Friday, May 14th. 2021 by 4.30 p.m. To view the Township Committee meeting via live stream, please access the YouTube link, which will be posted on the Wyckoff website's homepage at wyckoff-mj.com as a news item immediately prior to the commencement of the meeting at approximately 6.55 on May 18, 2021. To be notified of all future live streams, Township Meetings, please create a YouTube account and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Township of Wyckoff. In the event the YouTube platform modifies its connectivity protocols and does not announce these critical changes again in the future, instructions on how to view each meeting via Zoom technology will be posted at the news section of the Township's homepage, bikeoff-nj.com, before 7.10 p.m. This second method is provided to ensure the continuity of government when platforms which the Township does not control establish unannounced changes and will only be utilized if it is not possible to conduct the meeting via live stream on YouTube. As a precaution for this Plan B, the following instructions are provided. Please locate the link posted on the news item announcing the Township Committee meeting on the homepage of our website and use this link for the May 18, 2021 meeting set to begin at 7 p.m. 
This regular work session meeting of the White Hope Township Committee is now in session. In accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, notice of this meeting appears on our annual schedule of meetings. A copy of said annual schedule has been posted on the bulletin board in Memorial Town Hall. A copy has been filed with the municipal clerk, as well as the record, the Richwood News, and the North Jersey Herald News. All newspapers having a general circulation throughout the township of White Hope. <coughs> At least 48 hours prior to this meeting, the agenda thereof was similarly posted, filed, and emailed to said newspapers. The agenda with the resolutions and ordinances to be considered was posted on the township's website at Minutes and Agendas on the Friday prior to this meeting. Thank you, Nancy. Um, can we confirm that the Finance Committee has signed everything? They have. Thank you. And are there any comment, public comments received before 3 p.m. today? No. Written. Um, Sal, are your kids here yet, or should we? We could do a few more things and then rearrange it. Um, can I get a motion to open the 10 minute public comment period? 10 minute, two minutes per speaker for public comments on any governmental issue that a member of the public feels may be of concern to the township, to the residents of the township of Wyckoff. So moved. Second. Mr. Bushka? Yes. Mr. Madigan? Yes. Mr. Malkin? Yes. Mr. Shanley? Yes. Mayor Rubenstein? Yes. Uh, please call 201-891-7000, extension 222, if you wish to make a comment. Hearing no one, can I get a motion to close the public comment period? Motion to close. Second. Mr. Bushka? Yes. Mr. Madigan? Uh, yes. Mr. Melchio? Yes. Mr. Shanley? Yes. And Mayor Rubenstein? Yes. Um, and Bob, can we get a review of the 8 p.m. business meeting agenda? Yes, I'd like to advise you that the agenda is as it was posted on Friday, May 14th, with the resolutions and ordinances which the governing body will consider this evening. At the last municipal uh, meeting, the operating budget was adopted. And as such, this agenda includes a number of ordinances scheduled for public hearing. These ordinances are required to implement the budget. I would like to point out two items. One is that Resolution 201 appropriates a $45,000 grant, which we received after the date the budget was adopted. This resolution allows us to add it to the budget as both a revenue and an expenditure. I would also like to propose an additional resolution for your consideration this evening, and that's the resolution to close roads so that the police department can conduct the Memorial Day Parade. Is there anything else? That's all I have on the agenda. I can answer any questions. Anyone? Any policy action items? Yes, I, I, have, a, I have a few and I'll, I will uh, be brief. Uh, the 2021 open space grant application has been submitted to, uh, to Bergen County. I would like to point out to you that the Municipal Clerk's Office completed 105 Open Public Record Acts requests in the month of April. Our cybersecurity project team meetings were in your packet. The effort continues. If you have any questions, please, please call me when it's convenient. Uh, in the packet was a notice from the League of Municipalities that there was a specific law that affected, um, it was an unfunded state mandate that uh, affected uh, utilities since our sewer operating budget is a charge and not a utility and we're not regulated by the New Jersey Board of Public Utilities. The township does not have to comply with that. You want to recess? Um, we don't need to recess, do we? No, no, I'll recess my report. I just have a couple more things. Oh. <laughs> I, I can, um, I can do you want to finish now or do you want to finish later? I don't know. I, I, can, I can be brief. Um, I just wanted to uh, point out that regarding the township meetings charged to me to prepare for the 2022 budget, by looking outside the box and looking in every nook and cranny, we're starting to look at ways that we can provide services less expensive, look at additional non-tax revenue. In this week's Township Equity Newsletter, I will be having a request asking employees for um, suggestions as well. Tomorrow, uh, we have a, a, a meeting which we will be addressing most of that as well. I just want to point out, I, I'm sure you saw it, but the regional bid that the Bergen County Utilities Authority did for garbage disposal rates came in for year 2021 and 2022 at $80.40 per ton. Our strategic procurement resulted in a bid of $67.50 and $67.90, uh, which is considerably less. Um, 
And uh, I uh, just want to point out that today, this week, I've received two uh, property maintenance complaints, which will uh, require a dedication of my time, but that's my report. Okay, thank you. Um, Sally, ready? Ready. Okay. So the Township Committee has a proclamation that I'm going to read now for um, all of your years of service to the Wyckoff uh, Rec Lacrosse Program. Um, Whereas the Wyckoff Recreation Lacrosse Program has been under the guidance and leadership of Sal Sassano since he and Jim Haig developed and conducted the first and second grade co-ed winter indoor lacrosse program and the second and third grade co-ed spring lacrosse program in 1999 and has been the program director and a head coach of one of the most successful youth lacrosse programs in the area, Wyckoff Lacrosse, for 23 seasons. And whereas by 2003, Sal Sassano had grown the program to such a point that Wyckoff was able to enter full complement of third to eighth grade Wyckoff lacrosse teams into the North Jersey Junior Lacrosse League, where our teams have participated every season since, and in 2005 became an executive board member of the North Jersey Junior Lacrosse League, where he can use, continues today as the head of the Northeast Conference, representing all North Jersey lacrosse players in an effort to continue to improve and progress the sport of lacrosse. And whereas in 2007, Sal led the charge to have a lacrosse practice wall constructed at Memorial Field where youth lacrosse players could hone their lacrosse skills with assistance of so many, including Wyckoff Lacrosse Boosters members and even Sal's father, who created and painted the logo on the wall itself. Sal created a lasting facility that will continue to aid our lacrosse players for years to come. And whereas in 2013, Sal became a trustee for the Wyckoff Parks and Recreation Foundation in which his greatest accomplishment was leading a petition to allow for games of chance among our fundraising booster groups in town, which has led to thousands of dollars being raised for the betterment of our facilities, including 52,000, which was raised behind Sal's efforts to create a Wyckoff calendar raffle, which ultimately contributed towards the construction of the township's first artificial turf, turf facility at Pullis Field. And whereas Sal was inducted into the Wyckoff Lacrosse Ho Coaches Hall of Fame in 2015, an honor bestowed upon Wyckoff's finest and most dedicated lacrosse coaches. And in 2018, Sal received the New, New Jersey Lacrosse Foundation's Rick Richard Risk Unsung Hero Award for outstanding work in the further development of youth and high school lacrosse. And whereas Sal Sassano, in 23 seasons, has touched the lives of so many youth lacrosse players that it is impossible to truly grasp how much he has meant to our community. The countless number of players who have gone on to play high school, college, and even professional lacrosse have Sal Sassano to thank not only for his coaching, but also his leadership in the creation of the Wyckoff Lacrosse Program that he has tiredly volunteered his time for almost a quarter of a century. And whereas Sal Sassano would like to thank all of the Wyckoff players, coaches, team moms, parents, and booster members that he has had the good fortune to work with over the past 23 seasons. But most of all, Sal would like to thank his wife, Kelly, for her unwavering support while he volunteered to promote the game of lacrosse in the state of New Jersey, be a strong example for the Wyckoff lacrosse players and coaches, and influence several generations of players to become the best they can be, including the past 12 seasons in which Sal did not have a child of his own on his teams. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Township Committee of the Township of Wyckoff, County of Bergen, State of New Jersey, that Sal Sassano, Wyckoff Lacrosse Director and Coach for the past 23 years, is hereby extended congratulations on behalf of our entire community on his successful imparting of so much knowledge, skill, class, and sportsmanship to the Wyckoff Lacrosse Program. Our thanks for serving as a positive role model for our youth athletes of our community and illustrating the rewards which can be achieved through commitment and diligence in pursuing excellence. And finally, our best wishes to Sal and Kelly as they enjoy their first spring together since 1999. <laughs> we want to actually present you with this and we can all come down and take a picture. Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. Let him. You, you want to go in front of the microphone? Sorry. So yeah. if you would, Am I you'll, <laughs> you'll regret it. Go ahead, Sal. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try and keep it moving. Turn the mic off. <laughs> <laughs> he knows me. So, so we're going to sit down because I've yeah, yes, so been here. Yes, please. If you're going to say <laughs> something, we're we'll definitely so sitting down. So I have down. to say, in full disclosure, Tom told me that giving you the mic might result <laughs> in a few words. So. He's, he's not wrong. <laughs> So, first off, you can take the mask off okay. if you want. We can hear you. Tom, 
hard to hear people with that. First off, I, I want to really thank the, the Township Committee for this, this great honor. I also want to th thank the Recreation Board, Andy Wingfield, Bob Shannon, all of you. This is uh, just a, a tremendous award. I mean, you know, I started doing this so many years ago. I mean, nobody ever does this thinking you're going to have a moment like this. Um, in fact, most of those years, I, you know, I'm a lot more comfortable where you guys are, you know, giving awards to other people. But, but thank you. This is really uh, pretty special. And I just wanted to share, uh, and again, I'll keep it brief, is, uh, you know, a little bit about, you know, my lacrosse journey, uh, which, which really started in 1972, showing my age a little bit. Uh, it was a, my first day of middle school. And I was late to social studies class. And when I went in, the teacher, uh, you know, was a big, intimidating man who uh, was, uh, did not hesitate to voice his displeasure with me. Well, it turns out that that teacher went on to be my lacrosse coach for the next six years, all through every year, through middle school and, and high school. And uh, that day was the first of many, many, many times that I would... I hear him yell, yell at me, so. Um, but uh, that, that teacher, his name was Blaney McEnany. And, uh, you know, it, he had a major impact on my life. You know, from introducing me to a game that I love and one day would share with others, to helping me get recruited to play lacrosse at Cornell University. There is no question that my relationship and experience with Blaney is what inspired me to coach and to share my passion with, with other young boys. Um, and you know, if I'm to tell the story of Wyckoff lacrosse, that first chapter has to be the Blaney McEnany chapter for sure. That said, um, you know, over the last 23 years, I've been extremely fortunate to have shared in so many great memories, made close friends, and you know, many proud moments. And you know, to be perfectly clear, th there, uh, there are so many other people that, you know, really were just as passionate and just as involved in making Wyckoff lacrosse what it is today. And uh, my good friend, Jeff Eichen, he would be at the top of that list uh, in my book. So it's been, it's been with me most of the time and it's, it's been great. It's, it's a great friend and he's as much to do with this program as anybody. Um, we certainly have a lot to be proud of. As you said, you know, many, many boys have gone on to play uh, and have successful college careers. Don't know if anybody caught the NCAA tournament this weekend, but if you did, you saw Matty Carsian from Wyckoff score a goal in the Monmouth UNC game. Um, we've had tremendous success at Ramapo High School. We've won county championships, we've won state championships, and we are consistently ranked in the top 20 programs in New York. We're number 13 this week. So. What's that? New York. Oh, so in New Jersey. Sorry, New Jersey. But we're, but yeah. Sorry about that. But uh, anyway, and and so many individual players have earned, you know, all county, all state, all American honors. Too many to count. And now we're at a point in the program where all these years later, the older players they're coming back and they're coaching with us. Uh, Matt Bunting coaching at Ramapo High School. There's plenty of boys who've coached with us in the rec program and in, in some of our club teams. So, I mean, that's extremely rewarding. Um, and from my earliest teams that I coached, th those boys are men now. They're, you know, they, they, they have successful careers. Uh, some of them are husbands and fathers now. Uh, so that's just pretty incredible to have, you know, been a part of their journey through all of this. Um, but for me, the most rewarding thing is when you're working with young, young kids and when you see that, that light go on in their eyes and you know that you lit those fires and you ignite that passion in them, um, then I, I know I did my job to pay it forward. And, and you know what? One day they're going to do the same. I believe that. Um, lacrosse is not like any other sport. It, it's rooted in Native American culture. And when, when Jeff and I were young, you know, we learned the history of the sport and the Native American roots. And, and one of the things that you heard all the time was honor the game, honor the game. It's often referred to as the creator's game. It was so ingrained in every facet of their culture. And th th that phrase, honor the game, you see it on shirts, things like that, but they're, they're not just words to, 
to me, or to guys like Jeff. I mean, they, they mean something. We take that very seriously. And, and that, that is, in my view, that's an integral part of being a lacrosse player. So hopefully, that said, the Wyckoff lacrosse community hopefully will look back on the past 23 years and agree that you know, we've represented our town with honor, we've played the game with passion, and I know we had a lot of fun doing it. So thank you all. You wanted a picture last night, you told me. Come on. On behalf of the township, um, and for all the years and all the lives you've touched, um, we can't thank you enough. You know, you you took a sport that was by and large unknown, and you you created you really created something in, in Wyckoff with it that that um, that touched so many lives and had so many success stories, and really built it into a you and your group built it into a, a formidable a formidable program that we're all proud of today. And uh, I just can't thank you enough. And I have to give you a compliment. I haven't seen you with the beard. You look six years younger, man. You look great. <laughs> 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 All right, Tim. Yeah, thanks. Sal, you've done some tremendous things for this uh, lacrosse program, and I want to congratulate you on it. 
the one person I'm glad is not here right now is my wife, who wanted me to steer my 13-year-old into the lacrosse program, but I didn't know anything about it. And she's now in Mawa at a baseball game, where she would have much <laughs> rather been at a, at a lacrosse game. Uh, because she did go to grammar school, middle school, and high school with uh, Craig Cipher, oh. so that's why I know Craig's whole, you know, yeah. you know. So she knows she's known Craig her whole life, and she was trying to get Craig to get him into lacrosse. But uh, I think the one thing you know that they don't do anymore is he did his first, I guess, first or second grade where they went to the to the gym and they couldn't pick a lacrosse ball off the gym floor. And now they don't do it because, you know, that kind of no, no, loses no. people because they can't pick up that uh, lacrosse ball with a lacrosse stick on a gym floor. It used to be in the gym. Now they do it in the spring outside. Yeah, no, that's the better place to do it. So, but it's uh, congratulations uh, on, on what a tremendous uh, 23 years that you had in this program mm -hmm. and you touched so many lives. Uh, when I heard, I was at the, at the uh, rec board meeting last Monday, when Andy presented that your last game was going to be on the 22nd, that's why I believe you know we were going to present it to you at your last game. But then we were able to get you here because things are loosening up and we can have more and more people in here than we have. This is the first time we've had a lot of people like this in the uh, in the courtroom, which is where we want to get to. We want to get back to normal. So anytime um, my family is someplace, there's a lot. Yeah. Of so <laughs> so the good the good thing was once Andy uh, and Jeff Eichen spoke so highly of you of what you did. I said, well, Andy, what I'm going to need you to do now is do a proclamation that the township committee could report uh, could could honor your all your accomplishments. So I'm glad we were able to do that. I'm glad I was able to present it to our colleagues and uh, that we were able to do this tonight. And you have a, a wonderful family. So congratulations. Tom. Well, 1999, what a great year to start your lacrosse program here in town. If you recall, Sal, that's when we met. We met at St. Elizabeth's Church in 1999. We've been friends ever since. We're together, we're parents of 12 children, so I can't, I can't really attest to how good you are in uh, lacrosse, but it's obvious you're a good Catholic. <laughs> God bless, God bless Kelly. Kelly is, uh, Kelly, Lynn, I really don't know how you do it. Trust me. <laughs> you are going to be looking for springs. But it's so nice to have Sal here. I know Emily couldn't be with us here tonight, but uh, um, Sal's here. Scott's here. Uh, Julia. And Allie's here. So it's really nice tribute to you and testimony and the good thing about tonight is um, I'll take your proclamation, well deserved from the township, but uh, our friendship is forever. So congratulations, and we really appreciate it. Tom, it means so much coming from you for the last 20 years that I've known you. I don't know anybody who's been more committed to service and helping other people than you. Thanks. been an inspiration to me for all of those years. So thank you for all you all right, thank you. Sal, thank you for all your hard work and dedication to Wyckoff. Um, you know, I'm not going to lie, I kind of wish you were in East Rutherford when I was growing up because I never <laughs> saw a lacrosse game until actually I went to college. And boy, did I fall. I really enjoyed the game and I really liked the game. Something I would have definitely enjoyed, you know, growing up. And thank you again for everything you've done for Wyckoff. They, they have a youth program now. Yeah, now they do, yeah. yeah. So I want to thank you as well. Um, like Pete, I grew up in Montvale. We had no lacrosse program. There were no lacrosse programs up here. And I feel pretty honored to be able to present this to you as a first year lacrosse parent. Um, my daughter entered the program this year. We, we sit on the sidelines. We have no idea what the rules are. There was one triangle shaped goal, one square goal. I'm at the first level of learning about lacrosse but I am so happy for my daughter to be in this program and she's going to continue with it and hopefully fall in love with it and I thank you for giving her that opportunity and all of our other young men and women in town it's, it's a gift that you've given them so thank you just one more thing just one more thing now that you have all this time on your hands you can hang out a little more at Abby's diner so don't be strange <laughs> yeah. <here. laughs> yeah. all right. Just the timing, I guess. I'm there. <laughs>
think Rob wants to say something. Can I just say yeah. one thing? Sorry, go off, off, yeah. off the clock. Yeah. Off the clock. <laughs> We're on the video. Yeah. We're off the clock. Um, you know, I think I was one of those families that really benefited from Sal doing what he does in town. And he, he has this program for, I don't know, what age do we start? Six or seven year olds, eight year olds? I don't know. But it's the first, it's, it's really every kid's introduction to lacrosse in Wyckoff. And it's, it was done up at the church in 208. And, and there's softballs and these, these plastic sticks. And both my, both my boys, you know, instantly fell in, in love with lacrosse because of the program that uh, he was running up there. And, you know, it was, it was bittersweet. I was happy because I was learning about the sport that I love, but I also had a bunch of new baseball gloves in my garage that <laughs> <laughs> I had wasted money on. They immediately got, got hung up. But, um, you know, and my, my older son is one who, who, you know, as Sal said, you know, he's assisting and he's helping up in uh, Ramapo now. And uh, he still has a love for the game and, and he dreams of, of, of coaching and, and continuing with the sport on. So. I don't think you can get a better compliment than that. And, um, you know, for Sal and I are friends, so I've benefited from our, our friendship in many ways. But certainly the lacrosse program that, that he helped or he created here um, amongst doing other things, it's what makes this town so special, I think. You know, people giving their time and um, having that positive effect on not just us, but, but our children. So thank you, Sal. Thanks for everything. Thank you. Well, Sal, I still have a seven-year-old, and one of his best friends is James Cooey, and his father's a coach, so maybe there's still hope that I could get, in, get my, one of my sons into the program. Sure, definitely. So, well, thank you all. I mean, it's been a remarkable, it's been a remarkable journey, and uh, it's been one of the most rewarding things I've ever done. So, um, you know, I'm really proud of it, and also just grateful to have the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And like we tell most of our guests, it gets pretty boring in here. So right. yeah. please feel free <laughs> to come time. enjoy your celebration you now. stage left if you'd like. <laughs> this is the time. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Right, well, thank you. Thank, thank you for guys. coming. Thank, thank you, Sal. Right, thank you. See you guys. Congratulations. Congratulations. Good job, Sal. Congratulations. So I have one less good story for you. Our friends were walking around our block, and my daughter was out there, and her son was out there, and they were like, they just started chatting. And instead of saying that they were going to have a catch with their baseball gloves, she asked them to bring over a stick and have a catch with their sticks. So it's, it's an impact that you can't even imagine how far down it's gone. So. Yeah, it's, uh, it is kids falling in love with yeah. It's great to hear. So thank you. Well, I love you, Max. Only I really know that you were very brief. <laughs> it's not brief to me. Thank you. Compared to what Madigan does on a regular uh, basis. I mean, we, 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 we listen to Tom on a regular basis. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your evening. Enjoy. No one's on with the mask. <sighs> It's hot in here again. I'm hot. So I'm hot too. I'm hot too. I'm actually comfortable. I got it. I just super warm. Um, all right, let's do township committee reports. Um, Pete, you want to start us off? Sure. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first, I want to. Um, this is EMS week, so I want to thank our volunteer ambulance corps here in town for all their hard work and dedication for keeping. Wyckoff safe. Uh, the Board of Health had their regular meeting um, last week, uh, which fortunately I was unable to attend. I was at the Memorial Day Parade Committee meeting working out the uh, final details along with the uh, VFW for the uh, parade. And just a, just a reminder, the parade is a go. Um, 8.30 a.m., uh, the fire department's having their ceremony at Company One. 10 a.m., the veteran service at the Reformed Church and 11.30 a.m. the parade will be kicking off. Uh, if you are attending the uh, veteran service, please bring your own chair with you, the VFW has asked. And lastly, uh, we got our first shipment in of our military tribute banners. The brackets are in. They will start going up in the next few days and they'll all be up in time for the kickoff of mem the Memorial Day Parade. And that's all I have. Thank you. Tom? I have uh, two things. 
One, I had the uh, good fortune to visit the library with uh, Mayor Rubenstein last Friday in celebration of the 100th anniversary. And uh, she did a great job. We had a proclamation, as we know, for 100 years of the library. And again, we got a great program here. And I saw many people on social media comment on how much they love the library, they love the program, they love what they've done. And that's a tribute to uh, Laura Leonard and her team at the library, the Friends of the Wyckoff uh, Library, who've been uh, very supportive over the years, and our trustees that uh, meet the library board uh, once a month. So we're pretty blessed in town. It's a great, uh, great facility. They've done a lot. They have a lot of programs from uh, two-year-olds to 92-year-olds, I guess. The uh, second thing I just wanted to uh, notice, Fire Commissioner, that uh, Tonight's a nice night for the fire department, a volunteer fire department, as we have four motions uh, on this evening. Um, we're going to approve and memorialize the application of James Caruso at the fire desk, operator of Company 1. And we're going to approve and memorialize the application of Christopher Moses and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and memorialize the application of Zachary Bassio as firefighters at Company 2. And then the last one is, which is four people, is we're going to memorialize the application of Alexander Dalton as a junior firefighter with Company 2. All of these come become effective um, after this evening. So again, without our volunteers in town, I know it's been mentioned many times, a volunteer fire department, uh, folks in continued involvement and recruitment and people signing up and I'm looking forward to getting that approved tonight. That's all I have to report. Thanks, Tom. Tim? Oh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'll be brief. Uh, the rec board did meet last Monday, and that's why you know I learned about Sal and uh, all his great accomplishments. So thank you for presenting him today to, with the uh, proclamation. Uh, but they also discussed uh, a few other things. Um, the torpedoes may be presenting, offering to, to do a free camp for K-8 to um, aged uh, boys and girls the week before Labor Day. I think they're trying to work out the details where it will be free to any of uh, the White Cough residents, um, their kids from K to 8, where they could get uh, a free camp from, uh, from uh, soccer coaches uh, the week before Labor Day. Uh, they're trying to work out the details on that. They did discuss one issue uh, regarding uh, some students that are about to graduate eighth grade uh, where they're reclassing so that they're not going to high school uh, right away. They're going to take a year off and go to like a prep school of some sort. But the, but the rec, they're call, they're, they call it reclassing. The rec board does not want students that reclass to then start coming in and, and playing eighth grade rec sports uh, again. So they may be doing something to come up with a rule that once you go through seventh and eighth grade, that you can't play another um, position on eighth grade, especially on travel, uh, travel baseball, travel basketball, those type of things. So they're going to work on uh, what the rules are going to be uh, going forward on situations like that because it's happening more and more. Um, so that's one of the things. The rec football, the registration uh, completed uh, this Sunday. Uh, the flag football registration was very good for, for K, uh, K through second grade. Uh, and then for f tackle football, it was, e it was really good as well. The Pee Wees had 49, uh, uh, 49 register. Juniors had 56. And the seniors were a little down. They had 34, and that's because the seventh grader, the seventh grades, has always been low, was 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 the lowest for the seniors. Um, but they're 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 still going to have plenty of uh, plenty of opportunities to play with 34 seniors. Uh, so that that was a good thing. And rec soccer was very good. 601 boys and girls signed up for rec soccer which is one of the highest numbers that the rec department has had in a long time. So that's tremendous. And one of the things, and it didn't kick in this year, but the Torpedoes were talking with Andy about having some of the white and black teams, which is not the A, and, the a teams, it's like the B and the C, uh, in the future maybe signing up for rec so that you have some kids that are playing travel 
on the rec so that they could help the other boys and girls uh, on rec and have even more teams that could play. So that didn't happen this year, but they're, they're talking about doing that for next year. And uh, I spoke with, uh, that's the, it for my rec report. Uh, I did speak with Scott Fisher today uh, as the road commissioner and just asked any of the things that, that he's working on. He had talked about they're still working on the Larkin house with the windows and the painting. Uh, they're also working on parks, and they're 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 uh, finalizing their final plans for road pavings coming uh, coming uh, in a, in the next month or so. And that's it. That's all I got. Thank uh, you, Rudy. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll start with appropriately enough. Uh, I attended Lacrosse Day last week. I think many of us did. I was there earlier, like lunchtime, with uh, with Tom Madigan, and the burgers were great. Lacrosse was good, but the burgers were great. Um, last week was, this is in no particular order, last week was in was police week. And the police committee, considering of the mayor and myself, provided, and also along with Jersey Mike's, provided sandwiches for four shifts of our police officers. We missed one shift, so they'll, take, they'll get a rain check, I guess. Um, on Wednesday last week, there was a, a two-alarm house fire on Lafayette Ave. Um, which I was at, uh, Commissioner Madigan also stopped by. Um, I was struck by three things. One was the fact that they had, the house was up on a hill, it was a big old Victorian house. They had three ladder trucks on about a 40 degree dr angle of a driveway. It was really, I've never seen anything like that. They had White Coast ladder truck and uh, I believe Waldwick and Hohokus all with their ladders extended to this big old house. The second was the confined space that, that the, uh, the hose team had to negotiate its way through in virtual blackness to get to the room where the fire was to make a very impressive stop. And um, the third thing was the mutual aid response. Um, it was well coordinated, there were, there, and I'll probably miss some towns, there obviously Hohokas was there, Waldwick was there, Midland Park, Malwa, I believe Ramsey and Oakland were there, a few, some of the ones I saw. It was a very well coordinated um, uh, response. Um, last Wednesday's planning board meeting was a nothing burger. There were two um, resolutions for memorialization, and the KL application on Van Houten Ave was withdrawn. So that's now, um, uh, we'll look at, at enforcement of the, uh, of the denial from a year ago if something isn't done there. Um, I was unable to attend the Historic Preservation Committee meeting last, commission meeting last week. I'll report on that next time. Um, I attended, along with Mayor Rubenstein and her children, um, Lucas and uh, Jillian, the mitzvah day at Beth Rashad on Sunday. That was very nice. It's always a good event they run. I've been to probably six or seven um, of those events there, and it's a very good thing that they do. Um, I guess uh, personnel meets this week and police committee meets next week. Um, I, I have to make a comment, and, and this is not critical, about a, um, a flyer that we all received today promoting uh, vaccinations. Um, I guess it came, this comes to us via our membership with uh, our contract with the Bergen County Health Department. and. Um, I was troubled by it for two reasons. Um, one, it had it promoted three for-profit enterprises. One was um, Newbridge Medical Center. The other was Amazon, and the third was, in a less a less uh, overt way, Pfizer Pharmaceuticals. And I got to tell you. If if we Bob, is this required from our contract with Bergen County Health Department? I don't know. We get these things. We seem to be getting more and more of them. And, and you know what? If we get them, don't even send them to me because it's a big thumbs down with that sort of thing. We don't do it in town here. I mean, we have a situation where Hackensack Meridian is deeply embedded in the Wyckoff YMCA. We're not sure just just what that's what's going on there, and we don't need more of that. Um, I, I'm going to suggest that anything like that maybe just goes to the mayor. So she could review it and contact us rather than send it to all of us. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, anything that promotes a commercial enterprise, we don't do it on our, on our social media. 
We don't do it around our town, on our ball fields, and I, 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 you know, I think we should stay away from it. Um, and uh, the Environmental Commission was last night. Um, I'll just mention the Fishing Derby, which is on June 5th. And um, it's mandatory um, attendance by all the commissioners, and everyone has committed to be there, along with many of the Green Team volunteers. So I think we'll have a, a pretty good turnout. Um, the Junior Commissioners, um, what time I think does it, start? it starts at 8.30, 8 30, I think, yeah. Um, and I don't want to miss sight of the fact that yesterday was Tom Madigan's birthday. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday, Tom Madigan. So happy birthday, Tom Thank Madigan. You. Happy birthday, Tom. And that's my report, Mayor. Thank you. Um, most of my stuff has been covered already. Um, I do want to give a special thanks to Brad Fitz, uh, the owner of Jersey Mike's in Wyckoff, who donated all of the sandwiches that we put together and delivered for the police department. So it was, um, I think what it, we ended up doing three shifts, um, and so he generously donated all of that. Um, I also attended lacrosse day. Um, it was an awesome event. It was also my first lacrosse day. Unfortunately, the third, fourth grade girls, their opponent was a no-show. So we had all the parents there. We were all hyped up, and then they didn't show. So we scrimmaged against each other, and it was, it was a good day. The girls had a lot of fun. Um, as Tom mentioned, the library did on the 14th, their 100th anniversary. Um, I would urge anybody who hasn't to go to the library's Facebook page. It's, they filled it with kind of tidbits of information, trivia from over the last 100 years. They also have placards up at the library where you can read about the history of our library. So it's pretty interesting. Um, also went to uh, Mitzvah Day at Beth Rashon. It was a very nice event, very well attended, um, and we thank them for inviting us and allowing us to do the opening remarks. So that is all I have. And Rob? I continue to work on trying to wrap up the, uh, the, the site plan with the county for Maple Lake. But other than that, nothing to report on. I think we, we stayed out of trouble the last two weeks. So good going, guys. Good. good. good job. <laughs> You're keeping us out of trouble? <laughs> Try. All right. Um, then can I get a motion to... Can I just bring up one thing I forgot in my report? Um, Bob, I know we're going to get the lightning uh, detection systems in in, uh, in June, which is going to be a good thing. But one of the things that I want to make sure we do is that when we have those lightning detection systems in, that we have signage up as to what to do when those alarms go off. Because one of the things I did notice this weekend was when we saw lightning on Sunday, the referee, uh, the soccer referee at Pulis, blew the whistle, said everybody off the field did the right thing. But what the teams did was they went under the... Um, by the clubhouse there, I mean, where the snack stand is, and st sat on the tables, which I'm like, this can't oh, no. be good. It's underneath, now they're underneath a metal, uh, and, and some of the other teams, the younger ones that played on the, the small field, they went over to the jungle gym. On the uh, there, There's lightning in the air. It's not safe for you to be on the field, and they're on metal, you know, a playground. Where so, were the parents when that's going on? Oh, uh, these are parents from out of town, so that that's that's part Not of the issue. Stays. So the, the I mean, what I understand is they're supposed to go into the car right. and wait that's until go. until it's time to come out because right. you, if you get struck in a car, it's grounded with right. the tires, but right. you're not grounded, not grounded. anywhere, so, uh, right. you know, unless you're in the car. Absolutely. So you want to make so that's one of the things that once we get those. I want to make sure we have set rules that when people know their signs, get in your car. Right. You know, because I was cringing. I'm like, oh, man, this isn't good. So, anyway. I'll, I'll speak to Andy about it. I'll yeah, also, no, I mean, you know, you know, and, and, you know the, the, ref, the referees that were there did the right thing, getting the kids off the field. But, you know, the, one of the things that, you know, th they didn't get in the cars. That was the one thing that disturbed me, is the parents didn't get their kids into the car. Right. So we want to make sure that the parents know that once those alarms go off, get the kids in the car. The coaches know, get those kids in a car so that we don't have a death in, in wake off. So that's, that's it. So thank you. Um, can I get a motion to recess the open work session meeting? A recess or we oh, adjourn? Adjourn. Uh, adjourn. 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 adjourn? Motion adjourned. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Are you finished, so Bob? Did you finish your? I'm finished, thank you. Okay. 
Second. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Shanley? Yes. Mayor Rubenstein? Yes.